Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. Today we're working on Marsha. It seems like it's been a while. We did the transmission. We're working on some other projects, especially building her 440. But the big thing today is getting her some sure grip action. She's been a one wheel peel since the day she left the factory. And that simply is not enough for the street touring fury that we want to build. So what we're going to be doing today is we're working with our buddy Mark Poole who helped us out in troubleshooting the 318 cylinder heads and we're setting up a 489 case, factory 489 case, and we're equipping it with an Eaton True Track that is a really good sure grip replacement. It's a really stout piece. It's quite frankly a lot of overkill for what we're doing today. Our ultimate goal is to get this car to do a burnout for goodness sakes. So we're going to go to a set of 323s, which still is very friendly for highway driving, even around town. It's not going to be that drastic of a change, but it will be enough to help us in getting a little bit more low end acceleration, a little bit more response on the line, and just be a little bit more peppier around town. So again, this is the step forward and getting Marsha closer to being a really cool road machine and something that is just rowdy and fun and still super drivable. performance gears they're all the coarse coarse spline right well this is a fine spline it don't slide off as easy as the, no as the other ones basically oh well, there she goes i didn't take much effort mm. but that, that's what the little Hey, the tool works, man. It's not a bad idea if it works. Okay, you got a shim on there. Yeah, shims are on there. And you got more shims inside. Whoop. Here goes your pinion. I'm starting to like your tools. These are great. <laughs> Ingenuity, my friend. Okay, guys, so it's important to note something when it comes to changing out your pinion is that the factory has what's called a crush sleeve. And the crush sleeve is what's going to keep the pinion from moving around. And unfortunately, the big thing about the crush sleeve is that you're going to see that it requires 200 pounds to get this guy to actually crush down and hold in place. And that's fine. It's going to keep the pinion. And if you're doing a stock application, and quite frankly, we're doing a pretty stock application here for Marsha. I mean, it's only 323 gears. We're, nothing, we're not doing anything really, really crazy. But... The problem is that you can't reuse the crush sleeve once it's crushed. So you gotta get rid of these and you gotta use uh, either a new crush sleeve and crush it down to 200 pounds, or you can use what's called a crush sleeve eliminator. And you can see it's far, far thicker, it's a conical style sleeve, and it's reusable. So if you're gonna be planning on upgrading the gears or you're building a race setup, a crush sleeve eliminator is gonna be probably a far better option than going back to the stock crush sleeve. Both work really well. This one is really the benefits for repeatability. A lot of racers also feel that this will hold up a lot better to the pressures as your driveline is hammering on the pinion that this guy keeps just getting beat and beat and beat back and forth. And this big stout cone is going to take a lot of that beating a lot better. It's going to last longer. We just hopped over to Summit, and we know the guys at Yukon real well. Grabbed one of these, and this is going to be our, our really biggest upgrade besides the Eaton True Track, is going with the Crush Sleeve Eliminator Kit. Okay, so the main difference, though, 
when it comes to swapping from a crush sleeve to the sleeve eliminator kit is unfortunately they are not going to be the exact same length they just you know it's not a drop in there is some measuring and there is some shimming that's required to replace the crush sleeve with the eliminator thankfully yukon gives you a whole set of shims all sorts of different th thicknesses and all you're going to need is a good set of mics and a notepad since we're using the old bearing on the pinion instead of a new one we went to the original 1969 Plymouth service manual, which if you can get your hands on one, it's worth its weight in gold. And they give you instructions that if you're gonna use a new bearing, you wanna have 20 to 30 inch pounds. But if you're gonna use an old bearing, it says right here, you want zero to 15 inch pounds for a used bearing. So knowing that we took some measurements, first of the overall length of the crush, of the crush sleeve, versus the overall length of the Illuminator. And we came up with two 930 and 290. So our difference was really about 32 thousandths. And wanting to make sure that we had the right distance between those, and we didn't have any play, we didn't have any slop in there, we came up with uh, 25 thousandths worth of shims. So that put us about one to two inch pounds, which was perfect. And we had zero play. So we had exactly what we needed, just using a good set of mics, a little bit of math, and knowing what our threshold was. All right, so first we want to load up the pinion. These you can put on top of it. All right, now we want to put your tool on. Mm -hmm. Keep that from sliding out. Spin her over. Oop, okay. And then we're gonna shim it. It, it's, it's not much. It's no, very light pressure. Okay, and then we put this guy back on. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we do the seal. Mm -hmm. Let me center it. Okay, it's a little bit more towards you. Oh, yeah, take a peek. We're flush. Beautiful. See, you don't need all that fancy stuff. <laughs> Piece of exhaust tubing and a block of wood. Yeah, as we measured, perfect. Okay, so a couple things is that since the 489 case that we picked up did already come with a set of 323s, which was the gear that we wanted, we figured what the heck, we won't pay for a new ring and pinion set, we'll just use what we got. And a quick way to check, if you guys haven't done this before, believe it or not, it's all stamped here, and it'll show you right there. I'm gonna try to get the light. Here we go. 323. So we've got our 323 ring. We know it matches the pinion that we just put in the case. But the big step up, and this was something that, quite frankly, we never wanted to mess with again. So we stepped up big time. We went with an Eaton True Track. We're pretty confident that we'll never break this in a million years, <laughs> even if we go crazy with Marsha. This is probably gonna be the strongest piece on it. And we're pretty excited to be working with Eaton on that one. We're thankful to the guys there who helped us out with that. One last little bit of information was that since we're not changing out the axle bearings, we're not stepping up to the famous green bearings, one thing you gotta do is Eaton includes this small billet spacer. This billet spacer drops right in the middle here. We'll give you a good shot. 
drops right in the middle because this is what's going to keep your axles from sliding in and out if you don't have the green bearings. The green bearings will hold your hold your axles in place, but if you're not stepping up to those, you got to have this billet spacer just like the factory had that allows the axles to connect and not slide around. This is what's gonna keep them from moving around. So do not forget about this or you're gonna have some uh, blown axle bearings real quickly because they're gonna walk around inside of that differential. Okay, we are going to drop this ring onto the carrier. The ring doesn't sit down perfectly flush, it doesn't just drop on. So we're gonna use the left hand thread bolts to snug it down and that's gonna connect our ring to the carrier and our carrier into the case. So when it comes to something like this, it's a little easier to do it actually kind of counterintuitively and just set it up vertically like this. You hold up the ring and just start these just a little bit, just get a couple threads on them and work your way around and add another one and add another one. I've already got all of them in there. They're all finger tight. None of them have been tightened down at all. And they haven't really, you can see the gap. Gap isn't terribly equal. Um, we're gonna go around and just start snugging them up. But as you start snugging up all the bolts, it'll suck up the ring up to the flange and you have a nice equal seal. You just got to take a little bit of time. It's kind of time consuming. Don't go crazy. Don't get the don't get the impact out. You're going to probably mess things up if you get in a rush. So we're just going to take the uh, socket wrench and start slowly snugging them up all the way around in a cross pattern. It ain't pretty. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's why you have everything else to hold it on. And Mark went ahead, did us a favor, and he dimpled our main caps here. So that's gonna help us line everything up. It's not something that they did from the factory, but it's something to make life a little easier for you guys doing it at home, or God forbid, doing it underneath the car, <laughs> which I know happens. <laughs> Okay, we've got our two depth adjusters. We're just gonna walk them a little bit on the threads to make sure that they find their happy place. We had to wrestle with them a little bit earlier just in test fitting. The biggest hurdle that we encountered when putting in our adjusters was if the race isn't seated in deep enough, it's gonna collide with them and it's not gonna allow you to adjust them any deeper than they're supposed to be. So just make sure you stick your fingers in there, push the race in if it's not already in place correctly, and then you'll be in good good shape. Let's snug these guys down a little bit more. Get them a little closer to home. You're actually pretty good, fairly close. Oh yeah? Woohoo! <laughs> All right. We're taking these to 55. All right. All right. So we're just checking our backlash here. Yes, and we're too tight. We're too tight. Took some adjusting. We had to move the ring a little further back away from the pinion. We were square within the threshold. They said six to eight thousandths. We're a consistent six, maybe six and a half. So we're right in the sweet spot. Biggest thing you're gonna need is a dial indicator and a whole lot of patience. Um, we had to uh, take our adjusters and move the whole carrier back a little bit. We had a little too much play and then we got way too tight and just had to ease it back incrementally until we found exactly where she wanted to be. So with that, I think we're pretty dialed. We're gonna torque down our caps and I think we're pretty much good.
Okay, so we've got Marsha up in the air. We've got the wheels and brakes off. We've got her in neutral. So now we are just going to go around and take all of the axle nuts off, slide the axles out. That's going to free us up to pull the center section of the eight and three quarter out, as you can see right here. I'm going to go through a couple cans of brake clean because this is a little nasty. And I mean, we had done a, a quickie overlook and made sure that everything was adjusted properly and we got good brakes in the back, but I just can't leave things looking that bad. <laughs> so let's go around. We're going to knock these off and uh, get our axles out first. You can never have enough brake clean. You can never, ever, ever have enough brake clean. I knew it was 916s. I don't know why I even bothered to bring out the half inch. I always second guess myself on stuff like that. I don't know why. If I was smart, I'd knock these out and get rid of these left hand threads. But again, I just don't want to spend money where I don't need to, at least right now. Maybe in the future, if you guys like these videos, you want to see more from Marsha, we could totally do it. Because right now I'm just kind of having fun. A lot of you guys have liked and commented on the Marsha videos. If you want more Marsha content, give it a thumbs up, maybe leave a comment. That way I'll know <laughs> people like seeing more on this car. Let's try that again. Ding, fries are done. Yeah, we'll repeat that on the other side. And uh, then we'll move to the middle. Well, as you can see, our eight and three quarter is a little crusty. So it's gonna take a little bit of work. So we're taking the yoke apart, get these guys off. Then we'll start banging on these gnarly things that I guarantee have never been taken off. And we'll see uh, how successful we are. I don't expect very. We might need to put the jack underneath it to, to pop it loose. That's been a pretty common solution for a lot of third member swaps. All right, we got our yoke just about ready to pop off there she goes but we got a little bit of a situation this one is the last one it's get, starting to round off so we're going to, have to be a little careful trying to get that one to come off everyone else is broken loose we're going to take the drive shaft off put that out of the way and then work on this guy all right, and one more, and that should be all of them. I missed one. Oh, he seems to be. <laughs> okay, we've got a brick propped up on our floor jack. We're going to break the seal loose on our third member. It is going to be a horrific disaster of nasty gear oil spilled everywhere. I am not fooled by what to expect here, but it's gotta be done. So let me back up. We got a breeze, which means it's gonna get everywhere. And let's see how nasty this gets. There it goes. There it goes. Woo. Let's just let that drain for a little bit. That gear oil, I, I'm, I'm almost certain it's never been changed. <laughs> Let's take a good look at that. Yeah. And it's the old school stuff because it stinks like fish oil. Okay, so let's compare what we got. Here's what we pulled out of the probably never open, totally untouched differential for Marsha and let's take a gander 
Oh, look at that. I said 293s. We've got the baby 276s. Man, I was way off. 323 is going to feel like a monster compared to 276s. Woo! That's going to be a big difference. Man. And of course, it's open, so you can whirly bird these. I'm thankfully not seeing any metal shavings, of course. The fluid looks really good. We'll uh, take some rags and wipe out the bottom of the housing. But I'm not seeing any chip teeth. Not seeing anything out of the ordinary. So that's good news. And of course, we got our 489 case that Mark Poole helped us put together. Oh, 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 that's that's a lot more resistance. <laughs> I can just go whoop, nice and easy. <laughs> that one spins real free. <laughs> this one got some resistance to it. Just got to make sure that our gasket surface is clean. We have a little bit of residual. I want to just get nice and cleaned off. So we're going to go to the big gun. Knock this off. We got a paper gasket already on the housing. I do not like chasing leaks. So it's worth doing this now and doing it right. Just gonna put a little black RTV just so it seals up to the paper gasket nice. Make sure you get all the way around everything. It cures real quick. This is their Permatex right stuff. And I have been very, very happy with the results. Oh. I think I hear a big block Mopar coming down the street. Sounds like Jim's on his way. All right, we almost skipped the most important part in putting in our axle plug that keeps our axles from sliding in and out. We're going to have Jim, who just showed up, jack up the, the floor jack, and I'm going to try to weasel this in. All right. Um, I might need a dead blow. I need something with a little more oomph. <laughs> There's a variety of Ford fix-it tools. Gonna fix it. As long as it goes one more time. That's what we say. It <laughs> if it starts, just run it home. <laughs> yeah. Well, first run with the 323s on the Eaton. Nothing. But it pulls a little harder out of the hole. Well, it smokes more. <laughs> it's, it's working harder. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Didn't do anything. <laughs> Ooh. We're doing 40 and it says almost 50. Okay, so we're doing 40 miles an hour and the speedo is saying about 56 or 46, 45. 45. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Five off. All that's right. What, I think that's what mine was when I changed mine out. All right. All right, guys. We've done everything we can to get Martian to do a burnout. We've now gone to total desperate <laughs> desperate measures to finally get this car to do a burnout. So we're getting them wet. We've got our 323 gears on an Eaton True Track. And I'm letting Jim do the honors. Jim, go. There you go. Woo! We got smoke. <laughs> you did it, Jim. 
Some people will call that cheating, but I think it's ingenuity. <laughs> it's only cheating when they say it's wrong, right? <laughs> hey, you got some tire smoke out of it. We got some tire smoke. Oh, she got a little squirrely. That's good. That's good. Oh, golly. All right. Well, guys, that's going to conclude this episode of Mopar Connection Magazine. I'm the editor in chief. My name is Kevin Shaw. Thanks for watching. We got Jim Hannon with us from Dude's Garage. We got Marsha to finally do a burnout. I'm going to call it good on that one. Um, until we can build the 440 and get the 440 done, uh, it's going to have to count for now. So we're going to take her home after we cruise a little bit more, and we'll see you soon. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, maybe share it with your friends. That'd be great. Help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please check us out over at www.moparconnectionmagazine where new articles are written and published every day, entirely subscription free to you. And we'll see you there. Thanks again.